Hi guys, so this will be the third book for St. Patrick's Day, and it's called The Leprechaun Under the Bed. Right now I have little Charlie, who is sleeping, and then I have Milo, who he loves attention, so he's probably going to try to get my attention through reading the story, so we'll see how well that goes for you. I hope you guys are doing well, and that you are staying safe, and that you're getting full bellies and lots of sleep. And so here we go. Brian O'Shea enjoyed his privacy. A leprechaun can be alone without being lonely, he liked to say. Indeed, he would know, for he made a snug home beneath the ground in an out-of-the-way spot. But time went on. Big, tall human people moved nearer and nearer until one day a man named Sean McDonald started building a stone cottage right overhead. Brian tried leprechaun magic to stop Sean. He made Sean see headless ghosts and even a banshee rising from the foundation stones of his new cottage. But his plan backfired. It's just like my sainted mother always told me, Sean declared in delight. The land of Ireland is full of magic and surprises. All too soon a fine cottage stood over Brian's home, so he built a door under Sean's bed. On moonlit nights, Brian would cobble outside. When it rained, he worked under Sean's bed, deliberately disturbing the man's sleep. Yet he didn't wish to be discovered. So if Sean moved, Brian would whisper, now don't you be fretting your wee little head. It's only the cat under the bed. After a week of restless nights, Sean decided he had to know why he wasn't sleeping well. He went to bed as usual, but through his, though his eyes were closed, his ears were open. At midnight, the tapping began, and Sean sat bolt right up. Now don't be, you be fretting, you, your wee little head. It's only the cat under the bed, he heard from below. Ah, of course, the cat, Sean yawned, settling back under the covers. Then his eyes flew open. I don't have a cat, he thought, and if I did, who ever heard of a talking cat? So what was under his bed? The answer popped into his head. Sean smiled. His mother had always said that a leprechaun in the house was a fine piece of luck, luck he couldn't afford to lose. The next morning, Sean made stir about for breakfast and placed a bowl of it under the bed for the cat. At lunch, the bowl was empty, so he put in some stew. From that day on, every time he filled his own plate, he added a bit to the bowl under his bed. Sean was a hardworking man, but his small farm produced barely enough. Times grew hard and times grew harder until they came, there came a day when Sean went to bed without both his stomach and the bowl empty. The next morning, a gold coin gleamed in the middle of the kitchen table. What a blessing it is to have a cat in the house, he remarked aloud, before hurrying out to buy good food. They lived well for weeks on that coin, but soon the cupboard was bare again, and another gold coin appeared. Consider this alone, Sean said, until times are better. Thank you, cat. But when Sean went to buy his oatmeal potatoes, there was more than one eyebrow raised in the village. A poor man might have saved one gold coin for hard times, but two? Gossip ran like water through fingers, and as it spread, it grew. Sean McDonald must have a whole chest of gold coins hidden in his cottage. What many tongues say, be it true or not, many ears hear. Two robbers caught wind of the tale and decided that no one deserved Sean's go gossip gold more than they did. One crisp, dry morning, they hid outside waiting for Sean to leave. Then they slipped into his cottage tossed the cupboards and pried stones out of the fireplace. Such a clatter made Brian poke his head up from under the bed. He was shocked at what he saw, but what happened next was worse. The cottage door swung open as Sean returned for a forgotten tool. In no more time than it takes to tell, the robbers tied the poor man to a chair. Tell us where you've hidden the gold, they bellowed. 
Fearing for Sean's safety, Brian banged his hammer against the floor to catch the robber's attention. And now, what's that? One of the men asked. Fearing for Brian's safety, Sean spoke quickly. Now, you don't, now don't you be frightened, your wee little head. It's only the cat under the bed. Cat, the man replied. Well, the bed's the only place we haven't looked. As Sean worried, Brian grinned. Both robbers stuck their heads under the bed, and there they saw exactly what Brian had told them, a cat. But this was a wild cat, eyes like lightning and claws like knives. The cat smiled at the robbers and licked its lips as if it found the sight of them tasty. With a shriek, the men tumbled backward and fled as if the devil himself were at their heels. Brian laughed till tears ran down his cheeks. Sean chuckled as well as he wiggled free of the rope. Then he stretched and bowed in the direction of his pillow. "'Tis a grand thing indeed, having a cat beneath the bed,' he declared. "'Ah,' replied a voice from below, "'and it's a pleasure having a friend above it.'" And they lived well and happily for the rest of their days. The end. So be looking because I'll keep putting more books on to read. Um, we may have Charlie join us. Right now he's kind of asleep. Let me see if I can wake him up for you so you can see him really quick. See, he's kind of grumpy. But this is little Charlie. So I hope that you're doing well. Remember to get some rest, enjoy your family time, and try to read a good book at least 20 minutes a day. Love you.